may you be the one that will fill in for the time which they have given and for the hours which they have given to come and worship you. Let there be none of us who will go back regretting why we came to this house. Because Lord, I believe for the expectations of your people, you will meet them this day. And you will grant them your word to keep them and to help them to overcome the challenges which they are faced with. And to know that we have a God in heaven who loves us and a God who cares for us. As we take time to read the word, the Bible, Lord, come and speak to us. Give us a revelation of what you would want us to hear this day. And open our hearts, Lord, to respond to your word through salvations and healing and deliverances that, Lord, you're going to bring about this wonderful day. We give you praise and we give you honor for hearing our prayer. In Jesus' name we pray and we all say, Amen. And Amen. Give God a big hand of applause just to appreciate Him. Amen. All right. Now, this morning, I have a word that I want to share with you. Please pray for my voice. I've been talking too much from Friday. So I need, I need your prayer for my voice. And I want to share with you a word that I'm calling here. Three men that left the land of Ur. We had a little challenge in, 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 in trying to explain, to, 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 to mention this name Ur. I, I don't know that it's Ur or Ur. Ur. Okay, somebody says Ur. Another one says Ur. Three men that left the land of Ur. And I wanted to marry this message to the word I spoke to us a few Sundays ago. I think to, uh, a Sunday ago that spoke about three men that come to church every Sunday. I don't know how many of you can remember that sermon. Can you remember it? Let me see if you will. Three men that come to church every Sunday. No, man number one was who? The natural man. Then number two, we had the? The carnal man. And number three, we had the what? The spiritual man. Now these men, I spoke about them a Sunday ago. And I was encouraging all of us to choose to become the spiritual man. I want to try and attempt to connect this message this afternoon to those three men that I spoke about last Sunday. And I'm using this introduction to help us to see whether this man can help somebody in this congregation to identify himself with a spiritual man. This man, if I would say, I find them in the book of Genesis chapter 11, beginning from verse 31. To the end and then we'll pick chapter 12 beginning from verse 1 up to verse 6 that is the portion of scripture that we are going to be reading so as you open your bible let me just do an, a very quick introduction here this man left the land of ur you are it's ur according to the bible to a place called canaan a place called canaan amazingly one of these men never arrived in canaan one never did but two of them arrived in Canaan. But again, out of these two, one never received the promise. It's only one out of the three that received the promise that God had given to one of them by the name of Abraham. Now, Canaan in Scripture always refers to the kingdom of God. Every time you read the Bible and you come across the word Canaan, it represents the kingdom of God. That's the reason why when Israel was leaving the land of Egypt, the Bible, told, the Bible speaks, it says, he delivered them into the land of Canaan. So every time we talk about Canaan, we are simply referring to heaven or the kingdom of God. Put that at the back of your mind. I have come to discover in scriptures, as I've been reading my Bible, that the message which Jesus had from the time he began preaching, three and a half years of his ministry, Jesus never did anything but proclaim the good news of the kingdom of God. That's what he did. His message was to proclaim and to, to preach and to teach about the kingdom of God. And I believe this is also the message which God has given to the church. If there is anything that God wants us to do, particularly we who are ministers of the gospel, is to preach and to teach about the kingdom of God. And he had only one simple message. The message was, the kingdom of God has come. But I can say this to you as I look at these three men, not everybody who comes 
or who makes a journey or who starts a journey to Canaan reaches Canaan. And this is why I want to encourage somebody in this congregation, make sure you are the man that inherited the promise. Are you listening to me? Don't be the one who never reached. Neither be the one who reached but never inherited the promise. No wonder when he was talking to Nicodemus, Jesus made a, a, a three-way a, a, a three scenario. And he says, unless a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And that's the first man. Then he said, unless a man be born of the water and the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That's the second scenario. Then the third man is the one who does not only see, but enters into the kingdom of God. And that is my prayer for you. So, in his teachings, when Jesus was teaching, he used parables, he quoted scriptures, he even went as far as using proverbs at some time. Some, sometimes he, he, would, he, would, he would go to referencing from the past simply to emphasize or to make people understand what the kingdom of God was all about. And I said in the first service that the Bible is nothing but the kingdom of God. Which means God wants each one of us to inherit his kingdom. That is the message that we have. God does not want you to start a journey that you never finish. He wants to make sure that you inherit the kingdom of God. Let's look at the book of Genesis chapter 11 and see who these men are that I'm talking about here this morning. Chapter 11 and verse 31. Okay, Genesis 11 and verse 31. Now the Bible says, And Terah took Abraham his son, and Lot, the son of Haran, his son's son, and Sarai, his daughter-in-law, that time she was called Sarai, not Sarah, Sarai, his daughter-in-law, his son, Abraham's wife, and they went forth with them from Ur of the Chaldeans to go into the land of Canaan. Then the Bible goes, goes on to say, and they came unto Haran and dwelt there. Let's go to verse is there verse 32? It says, And the days of Terah were 205 years, and Terah died. Let's move on. Genesis chapter, chapter 12 and verse 1. Now verse 1 introduces, says, Now Abraham had said unto, God had said unto Abraham, Get thee out of the country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, to a land that I will show you. Then verse 2 says, And I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and I will make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. This is the promise God is giving to Abraham here. Verse 4. Verse 4. And so Abraham departed as the Lord had spoken to him. And Lot went with him. And Abraham was 75 years old when he departed out of Haran. Let's go to verse 5. And Abraham took Sarai, his wife, and, 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 and Lot, his brother's son, and all the substance which they had gathered, and the souls that they had gotten in Haran, and they went forth to go into the land of Canaan, and into the land of Canaan they came. And the last verse is verse 6. And Abraham passed through the land unto the place of Sichem, unto the plain of More, unto the, and the Canaanite was in the land. Now, those scriptures, those scriptures that we have read, mentions three men whom, by God's grace, I want to try to explain what I believe the Lord wants us to hear about these three men. Three men that he has mentioned here. The man, the first man, he, he, he mentions, his name is Terah. His name is Terah. The second man that is mentioning here, his name is Lot, L-O-T, Lot. And the third man whom he mentions here, his name is Abraham. Now, out of these three men, there was one whom God had revealed himself to him. If you can go back to my scripture, where we saw about the three men, we say there's a man who hears the word of God and he never receives it. Then we have the second man who hears the word of God, receives it, but he allows other things to operate in his life. And this man never reaches his destiny. Then we have the third man who hears the word of God, receives the word of God, consumes the word of God, believes the word of God, lives with the word of God, and he ends up receiving the inheritance. 
Now these three men come in the same category. Abraham, God spoke to Abraham. In fact, people think Abraham began his journey in chapter 12 and verse 1. That is not true. That's what I used to believe. Chapter 12 verse 1 talks about and Abraham began, left the land of Hiran. I think for those who study the Bible, if you study the Bible and you go back to it and you begin to look at the scriptures and read them in context, you will realize that God called Abraham when he was at the place called Ur of the Chaldeans. You are of Chaldeans. And I have established that because any other scripture subsequent to that talks about Abraham leaving the land of Ur. Which means the place of Hiran where we are seeing him now at the age of 75 living with Lot, God had already spoken to Abraham. You go to, you go to chapter 12 and verse 1. Could you please flash it again? Chapter 12 and verse 1. Genesis 12 verse 1. Because I want us to go together. He says, now the Lord had... It doesn't say, and now the Lord spoke. I know some trans, I've gone through some translations. Some are saying the Lord spoke to Abraham. As though it was happening there. But the original translation says, now the Lord had said unto Abraham. Meaning God spoke to Abraham even before he reached the land of Haran here. When he was in the Ur of the Chaldeans. Please help me here. I don't have a revelation about this one here. I do not know how his father Terah got the revelation to go to Canaan. I have no idea about that. But when you read the Bible, you realize Terah is an example of, of, of a man who is operating in the natural. Someone who has not had the word of God and conceived it, or he has had, but he has not received it in his heart and conceived it and, 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 and made it part of himself. This is a man who hears there is heaven, and he gets excited about heaven, but the next minute he's still the same man that was. He has no idea about the kingdom of God. That's what I see, and I see of terror here. A natural man. A situation that many of us are in. Sunday is a day of worship. So we go to church because it's a day of worship. We don't go to church because of the kingdom of God. We have very little of the desire of heaven in us. But we are in church because Sunday people go to church. I do not know whether Abraham told Terah that God had told him to leave Ur of Chaldeans to go to the land of Canaan or to go to the land that he would be able to show him. But we see Terah here quickly organizing himself. And I'll come, and I'll come back to that later. And then the second person is this man called Lot. This is a man whom Terah had adopted as his son. And he was a nephew to Abraham. And Abraham loved Lot with the whole of his heart. This is the type of a believer who actually joins us in our journey to heaven. He is willing to go up to the point where he can, he's almost receiving the promise. But this man never receives the promise. Because there are certain things in his life that he has not abandoned. Like I mentioned to you, the carnal man is a believer. Somebody who is born again. But this man is still living with the things of this world. I hope you're following me. Are you following me? Because we are going to see how these men are going to be eliminated, eliminated before God confirms his promise to Abraham. Now, among these three men, it is only Abraham who received the word of God. It is only Abraham who conceived the word of God. It is only Abraham who embraced the promise which God had given to them. But yet all the three men began their journey to the land of where? The land of Canaan. Now, the amazing thing is this, and I will go through these men one by one because I want to make sure I finish what I want to say with you here this morning or this afternoon. The first man whom I see, as I mentioned, is Terah. And when you go to the scripture in the book of Genesis chapter 11, again, we go back to verse 31. Look at this man called Terah. Look at Terah. In verse 1, the Bible says, Then and Terah took Abraham, his son, and then he took also who? And Lot, the son of Haran, Haran was his brother, who had died, his son's son, and Sarai, the wife of Abraham, daughter-in-law, and his son's Abraham's wife. And they went with, and he and went forth with them from the land of Ur to the land of what? Help me. Where was he going? I mean, Terah. 
the land. There is no reason why the Bible says Keturah was going to Canaan. There is no reason. Remember, Ur is in Babylon. Actually, Ur was in the present Iraq that we that we are that we know today, Iraq. That is the place where people worshipped idols. People in that in that place, people had no knowledge of God. This is why God told Abraham, come from among them and I'm going to take you to a land that I will show you. Can I surprise you by telling you this? Even at the call of Abraham, God never told Abraham where he was going. He simply told Abraham, come and I will show you a land that I will give to you. But amazingly, how Terah decided to go to Canaan, the same land which God had promised Abraham, it amazes me. In my thinking, Terah was basically just a natural man, a natural person who had authority over Abraham. Authority over Abraham. Abraham is living or going to the land which God is showing him, but there is an authority over him in the name of Terah. What I'm calling here the natural authority that Abraham was operating under. Now hear me right. When you are born, you are born under a natural authority. This is what the Bible says, for all have sinned and have fallen short of the glory of God. It means everybody who is born in the flesh, who is born after his father. Here in this case, Abraham was born after Lot. He was still operating under the authority of Lot. And even though God had told Abraham, come and I will show you a land, as long as Lot, as long as Terah was with Abraham, there was no way that Abraham was going to reach in that land and receive the promise. This is the first man that I'm introducing to you this morning. That if you are operating under the natural, the natural authority in your life, you have never given your life to Jesus. You have never surrendered your life to Jesus. You have never come to a point where you have removed that authority, that natural authority that was over you and replaced it with the authority which God is giving to you in your life. I can assure you, you will never get to the place where God wants you to go. Terror is an example of a man who is walking in the natural. Somebody who, is, who has no idea where he's going. People who come to the house of God, they have no idea where they will go when they, when they die. They have never been sure of God's call upon their lives. These are people who operate under the natural authority, the moral authority, things which exist in their lives, which they have no control over. But I, I've got the good news for you. When you hear the word of God and you believe the word of God and you embrace the word of God, there is a promise for you. There is something that God will do in your life. There is a place that God will take you. There is a place that God will hook you. Where you will begin to realize the fullness of his blessings. So Terah was this man that left with Abraham. In other words, he was leading Abraham to the place where the promise was, but he was ignorant of what it is that he was doing. So as this man continued going, I think God realized as long as Terah is with Abraham, nothing will happen. The Bible speaks and it tells me, if you can go to the same, same verse 31, same verse 31, it says in that verse, they went to Canaan and they came to a place and the place is called what? Haran. And they, they dwelt there. To teach me that the natural cannot go beyond the natural. In other words, if you are operating in the natural, you will never go beyond the natural. You must come to a point where you must leave behind the natural. This is why we have what we call as putting on and putting off. When you are born again, you are, when you are born again, you become a new creature. It means the old is taken away from you. I don't know what I'm talking Greek here. Is somebody following with me? Are you listening? To Can you just wave if you're with me here? You know, last Sunday, I was so blessed to listen to Pastor Simon preach. Sunday, we were not here with Nelly. We were forced to go and minister to our father. Nelly's dad was, and he's in hospital. He's not been well. He's been operated on. Please pray for Nelly's father, my father-in-law. All right? So we were forced to go just to minister to him. Okay? And he's still in hospital even as I speak. And Pastor Simon preached. I was so blessed to hear Pastor Simon preach after almost six months. Were you, were you blessed? 
Were you blessed? Yes. But let me shock you. Some fellow sent me a message. He told me Simon was too deep for anybody to understand. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not lying. I'm telling you. I even showed him the, I showed him the message. He said, Pastor, he preached. He, we read so many scriptures and uh, we, I was confused. He, he, tell him not to be too deep. <laughs> and I laughed. I said, listen, if you don't want to go deep, ask your friend, how long, where do you want to go? I know some of you are looking at me with funny, with the funny eyes. Let me tell you, the kingdom of God is not on the surface. It's not on the surface. And we are living in times where we must get to where God wants us to get. It will, ha it will not happen by miracle. It is not when you... you you, you want to hear what will make you happy. Because there are some fellows who want just what will make them happy. But we, we have decided we must take you to heaven. Amen. Are you hearing me? Yes. And all of us will go. Yes. Me, I'm convinced all of you will go. Amen. If you believe with me, lift up your hand and say, I do. I do. How many want to go to Canaan? Can I see? Not the one of Raila. Canaan. And we cannot go when we are not prepared to go into the deep things of God. He told me, teach your pastors to preach what is relevant. I said, do you think I'm going to tell pastors what to preach? And I'm saying this because the person did not want to disclose who he is. I can tell you this, if you don't want to go deep, you go where there are shallow waters. Because here we have chosen, we have chosen here. I, you didn't hear me. Can I speak that again? Yes. This is why we are raising our young people. I was so blessed to see Simon son leading worship here. Because we, do, we want everybody to come with us. Everybody must come. Yes. Including your children, they must come. Yes. Thank God for even terror. Though he never knew where he was going, he was still going to Canaan. He was this man who comes to church. I, on Sunday, I must just go to church. But he has no idea what it takes for him to go to the land of promise. And I'm here to encourage you to tell you, embrace the word of God. Amen. Don't operate on the shallow. In fact, refuse to be a person who is operating on the shallow. Because we are living in the last of the last days. Simon told us. In these last days, even the very elect will be deceived. That's what the Bible says. We are living at a time when if we cannot dig the Bible, know the Bible, preach the Bible, teach the Bible, some of you who think you are spiritual, you will be swept by this, the, 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 the wind of deceit. That's why we're teaching the Word of God. So when we teach, receive it. I hope you still love me. One day I'm going to preach a message that you will love. I'm telling you. I have them. Pastor Geshuki, the Lord is giving me a message on prosperity. And when I preach that one, and, and you will tap into me by sowing a seed in me. <laughs> Are you hearing what I'm talking about? I'm simply telling you, Canaan is not for everybody. Heaven is not for everybody. It is for everybody if you believe. But if you don't believe, I can assure you, you will remain behind. Tara had no idea. If God had spoken to Tara and Tara had received the word, I'm telling you, there was no way that Terah would have gone to a place called Hiran and remained there. So the Bible says, you look, can we go back to that scripture? Go back to that scripture. Me, I like the Bible because it's very interesting. Can you read with me? He says, and he took. Then he says, and they went forth with them. Where? From Ur to where? Where were they going? Where were they going from Ur? Canaan. But did they reach Canaan? Now listen to me. When he reached the place called Hiran, Terra got tired. So Terra hung there. He thought he had arrived in Canaan. This is why many people don't go even beyond, beyond singing a hymn. They don't go beyond reading uh, John 3.16. They reach there and they think they have arrived. Terra thought maybe he had arrived in Canaan. In Iran, he stayed there. And if you got the second verse, that is verse 32. The Bible says, and the days of Terra were 205 years and what happened to Terah? Where did he die? So listen, if you are a Terah, can I tell you something about Terah? Let me make you Abraham. 
God has spoken to you and you are coming, walking with the terror. Please don't allow terror to hinder your blessings. Yeah. Terror must do what? Yeah. Help me preach. Terror must do what? Yeah. Tell your friend, terror must die. Yeah. You know the word terror is also, it's not good in, in English. Terror. Terrorist. So terror had to die. And terror died at a place called Hiran because terror was not the promised. He had nothing which God had spoken to him. He was simply a natural man on a trip to a place that is spiritual where he was not supposed to reach. And so the scripture tells me there, and terror died. Let me shock you by telling you this. I don't know. Maybe Gishuki and, 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 and my friends who are pastors here can tell me. I don't know how long they stayed there at Hiran. I do not know the day when God told Abraham, when God told Abraham, leave. I don't know. But I'm beginning to imagine maybe it could have been when Abraham was 30 years old. Maybe he was 50 years old. But because there was terror in his life, Abraham could not receive the promise until terror dies. And I'll tell you this, you can never receive the promise of God until the natural in you dies. If you are still living in sin, you are still living with evil, you are still living with the demons, you are still living with everything you know that is of the devil, tell it to die. So that you can see eternity. That's the kingdom of God that Jesus was preaching. You know, Jesus, every time he preached, he gave examples. Every time you would say the kingdom of God is like. The kingdom of God is like. And I'm telling you this, this afternoon, the kingdom of God is like terror. Who remains on the road, he dies so that Abraham can receive the promise. The promise was for Abraham. It was not for terror. Terror is simply an example of people whom God has given a promise to and they are carrying a baggage of some sort that stops them from receiving the promise in the time God wanted them to receive that promise. Please understand it that way. Understand it that way. Terror is an example of men and women whom God has already spoken to. God has already blessed them, but they cannot receive the blessings of God because they are carrying a baggage. They are carrying something on themselves that would not allow them to receive God's promise in time. And if I were you, I would make sure terror dies. Let me go to the second man. The second man is Lot. This man Lot was simply a nephew of Abraham. And amazingly, Lot was loved so much by Abraham's father. So Abraham also embraces him and he takes him. So when God is speaking, Lot is with Abraham. I have put in my notes here, I have said, when they began the journey, Lot never seemed to be a problem. When they began the journey with Abraham, he never seemed to be a problem. He was this young brother, this young nephew, a good man, who can support me in my endeavors when I'm doing ABCD. A thought which the enemy uses every time to make us miss on God's blessings. When you carry things on you which don't even seem to be a problem to you. But later on they become a thorn in your flesh. This is what Lot was here. Can I tell you something about Lot? This man Lot, after, after Terah had died, God revisited the promise he had given to Abraham. And this is where we find chapter 12 and verse 1. 12 and verse 1. If you go to 12 verse 1, the Bible says, now the Lord had said, he had said to Abraham, he now revisits the same, same thing in chapter 1. Get thee out of thy country, from thy kindred. Now country was Ur. Kindred was the house of terror. Family, father's house was terror. Am I, are you following me? Can I repeat again? Can I repeat again? Country was where? Ur. That's the land of Iraq there. And then kindred was where? Kindred. The, the family. The family where they had come from. And then the father's house was Terah's house. Then he says, unto a land that I will show you. He never even said Canaan. A land that I will show you. This is why we, we believe in heaven. We've never been there. But we know we are going there. Now look, after Terah is dead, verse 2 says this. Verse 2. I will make thee a great nation. Let's move to verse 3. Verse 3. Verse 3. I will bless them that bless you. Verse 4. So, Abraham did what? Departed how? 
as the Lord had spoken unto him. Now referring back to where he had been. Now you know what is happening here? The natural has now left. In other words, now Abraham is born again. He, he, he is saved. And Lot is also saved. They are now moving to the land which God had spoken to them. Now the Lord, as the Lord had spoken to him. And so Lot went with him. The Bible just says Lot went with him. If you look at that scripture. And Abraham was 75 years old when he departed out of Haran. Now when Terah was dead, it's when Abraham now remembered. I mean, Abraham recollected. He realized God told me, he's taking me to a land that he will show me. So Abraham arose now in a new strength. And can I prophesy to you? You will arise again in new strength. Yeah, when that, that thing is dead, you know that thing? Don't your neighbor tell him that terror. When that terror is gone, eh? Then, then you're going to arise again in strength. And you will remember, I'm going to heaven. Now you'll collect yourself and begin now the journey to heaven. Unfortunately, in this scripture, it says, and, can somebody help me here? Lot went with him. Abraham didn't realize Lot was a baggage that he was carrying. This is the man I call carnality. Where you are born again and you are carrying on you a baggage which you are not aware of. Today you can never tell who is a believer and who is not a believer. In fact, we've come to a point where instead of us even knowing who is a believer, we are now condemning one another. Can I speak? Can I speak here? We need believers. We need people who love Jesus. Not men who just walk with us for the sake of walking with us. We need people who are believers in the home, believers in the office, believers in the workplace, believers in the church, and believers everywhere. Because you know your destiny. You know where you're going to. Nothing will move you or shake you. You know you are God. The Bible says, and those that know they are God. What are they going to do? They shall be what? Strong. And when they are strong, they will do what? They will do exploits. We need men in GCI who can do exploits for Jesus. And I am convinced, Mimi, I am convinced. When I see you people, you can do exploits for God. So the man stands up and he begins his journey again. But this man Lot is with him. I will preach about Lot later. I will tell you the characteristics of Lot. Very, very terrible. This is a man who was fully walking in the flesh. You know flesh? Flesh is when you sit with him, you see, you just see, you see what? Flesh. Dambi. This was this man called Lot. He never had the spirit which Abraham had. And this is tested when now Lot and Abraham are parting. Abraham tells Lot, choose where you want to go. Where did Lot choose to go? Which cities did he choose to go to? Uh -uh, can you help me? Which cities did he go to? Uh, you don't want to say, yeah? Okay. If you don't want to say, it's okay. Which cities did, he want, did, he, did Lot go to? Sodom and what? Why? Why? Oh, those cities were so nice. There was music from there. He could hear music when they were with Abraham. The plains were nice. The food was good. Everything was fantastic. The things which people are looking for in this life. The messages that we want in our churches where everything is nice and good and fantastic and we forget, listen, <laughs> did you know everything belongs to God? Yes. Even the things you think are good belongs to God. So this man was basically a baggage that Abraham was carrying with him. How do I know that? Because it didn't take time before Abraham realized this guy was just a baggage to me. When they left, they, they had very little stuff. Here and the Bible says, and what they had gathered in Hiran, just a little stuff. All of us understand. Abraham went down to Egypt. You remember the story of Egypt? And in Egypt there, Pharaoh looks at Abraham's wife and he desires her. Eh? I got a revelation some, years, some times back. I realized Pharaoh didn't just grab Sarah. Sarah came into my chamber. No. Pharaoh was a very disciplined man, very nice man. A king of horn and respect. Whenever he wanted to do something, he did it well. Like our president. So what did he do? You know what he did? He asked whose 
girl is that. He did. He didn't just pull her. He says, I, somebody reported we have seen a woman in the city. Then he sent spies to go and check on her. And the woman was the fairest, the best in the city of Cairo. So Pharaoh says, who is she? And the report went, she is a, a sister to a gentleman called who? Abraham. We know the story. So Pharaoh says, can you invite that young man to come to my chamber so that we can negotiate dowry? Who was the beneficiary of the dowry? Some of you tell me, who was it? Who do you, went, who do you think went to negotiate for, for Sarah? I mean for Abraham. Lot went, the nephew. And, and, and this one was saying, this is actually the sister of my cousin, my cousin here, I mean my nephew here. And, 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 and Pharaoh is asking, how much can I give you? And Lot is saying, give me everything that you have. So Pharaoh released everything in the hands of Lot and in the hands of Abraham. That the Bible says when they left Egypt, they were very. How many believe the Bible? How many believe this book? When the Bible says very, does it mean very? Or does it mean something else? It says, and they were very rich. Which means Lot, when he's arriving back to Canaan, Lot is loaded. He has all the money. He's, I mean, Lot has cows, Lot has animals, Lot has servants, Lot has camels, Lot has chariots. And immediately that happened, a problem arose. And we know the problem. Instead of Lot understanding, it is Abraham who has actually made me rich. Lot began fighting Abraham. Wanting to have what Abraham has. His children and his men servants and, his, and, and the people who were taking care of his flocks, they began fighting against the servants of Abraham. Until Abraham looked and he said, why are you fighting me, Lot? You are my nephew. He says, Lot, now decide where you want to go. If you go this direction, I will go this direction. If you go that direction, I will go that direction. Let me ask a question here. If you are taken to Uhuru Park, you know Uhuru Park? I know all of you know the Uhuru Park, and you are told to choose any part of Nairobi where you will take. Which side would you choose? Which one? Which side? I know you've already seen a picture, isn't it? I think many of you will, will, will look towards... Which, which side? How many of you will look, will look, will look, will look Eastlands? I know all of you will look towards the other side. Because in your mind, you will believe, if I go that side, I am going to make it. This is what we call a sensual thinking. Fleshy thinking. Eyes. Lust of the eyes. Because Lot looked and he saw the plains of Sodom and Gomorrah. The beauty of Sodom and Gomorrah. The music of Sodom and Gomorrah. The men and the dressing of Sodom and Gomorrah. You know, they were very rich, but they neglected the poor. According to the Bible. Then Lord says, I want to belong to those ones who are on the other side. And I'm sure if you're given a choice here, 90% will leave GCI and join something else on the other side. Uh, of course not you. You're not in the 90%. Tell your friend you're not in the 90%. You, you are in the 10% that will remain. But he didn't realize actually what God was doing. He was shedding off a problem. Can we go to the Bible and read here? I have 15 minutes to go. Now, if you go to verse 20, verse chapter 12 and verse 5 to 7. Chapter 12 and verse 5 to 7. No, 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 no. I, 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 no, not that one. Let's go to chapter 13, verse 14 to 17. 14 to 17. Okay? Now, Lord continued, continued presence in the life of Abraham began to create problems. Verse 14 to 17. And I read. says, And then the Lord said to Abraham, and I want you to read with me. After, help me. After what? That Lot was separated from him. Now, now you imagine from the time when Abraham arrived in the land, God is silent. Silent. Lot has, they are living in the land of Canaan. God is not saying anything in the land of Canaan. He's silent. In fact, let me speak this to you and tell you this. Every promise God made to God, God made to Abraham was a wish. A wish. Would you come, my brother? Let me just use you as a point, as, 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 as an example. Elder Jimmy, if I told Elder Jimmy, Jimmy, you know that house I have in Barak? I'm giving it to you. I will give it to you. I will give it to you. What does that mean? 
I have done what? Have I given it to you? If I say I will give, does it, does it mean I've given him? What does it mean? I have simply done what? You have given you a wish. In other words, you, I have simply made a what? Thank you, Jimmy. You may sit down. I'll bring you back again here. All right? Now, Abraham was only receiving a wish. Believe me, even when he entered the land of Canaan, God told him, and we can read that in chapter 12, in this verse, chapter 12 and verse 7. Look at verse 7. Chapter 12 and verse 7, if we go back there. The Lord appeared to Abraham and said, unto your seed, can we read together? He said what? I w help me. What did he say? He he'll do what? I will give this land and there Abraham builded an altar who, to God who appeared to him. Now this was a promise. He's in the land. God has already put him in the land. But God is not telling him, I have given you this land. In other words, he's giving him a promise which is a wish. But Abraham is not aware the reason why God is holding back. Let me speak again and tell you this. There are people who are, I mean, they, they, they have reached the point where the blessing which God intended to give you is with you. But you know what? You cannot even reach out and touch it. Because there are people who have surrounded you or there are things which have surrounded you that keep you away from receiving the promise which God has given to you. You didn't hear me. If you did, you would have said amen. amen. Let me repeat again. Some of us, God has already given you what you're looking for. Even that promise you have, that healing you have, that miracle you have, that job you've been believing God for, you have. But let me tell you, there are people in your life. There are things in your life. Oh, you're not listening to me. Which, they are, you have the promise, but you cannot reach out and take that promise. Because those things in your life have kept you away from reaching out and receiving what God has intended to give to you. That's what was happening to Abraham here. Because when you go now to the verse which you are reading, that is chapter 13 and verse 14. 13 and 14. It says, and the Lord said to Abraham, after that Lord was separated from him. He now tells Abraham, and you can read with me those scriptures because those are the scriptures that I, I hope you can understand with me. He says, lift up now your eyes and look from where? From the place where you are. Can we read which, which side is supposed to look? Where? Northwards and then where? And then where? And then where? Now remember, Lord has chosen Keleleshua. Help me. I don't know those places. Going that direction. K Kennedy, you know that those places. Keleleshua and where? West Lights. Can you continue? It is sure up to where? To some, they don't know what you're talking about, Kennedy. All the way to Ridgeways and down that side. Lord has already said, that is the area I am going. But look, God is telling Abraham, now lift up your eyes and look. And he's telling Abraham, look first north. He stands there at Uhuru Park and he looks north. Then he says, look south. He looks south. He says, look east. He looks east. He says, look west. He looks west. I want to ask you a question. Don't you think Kitisuru was in one of the directions that God gave Abraham? Yes. Huh? Yes. What do you think? Yes. Did he tell Abraham that one I gave to Lot? Now you look this side and the, did he tell him that? No. Can I tell you good news here today? God will give you even that which somebody else has. Let me tell you, can I encourage somebody here? Especially you who has a, is it 10 by 10? Or is it? I want to encourage you. Turn to your friend, tell him it doesn't matter. Some of us, we have just 10 by 10. Eh? Where you enter, you enter in style. And you sit in style, isn't it? And you make sure that, uh, I'm sure you know what I'm talking, I'll, I'll pass through there. Me, 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 I never slept on a bed. I slept on a bed when I married Nelly. Never slept on a bed. I used to sleep on chairs for all my life. My sister can tell you, she's there. I never speak a lie here. And of course, not even Nelly knows. First time we didn't even have a bed because we had guests. All right? What am I talking about? So we have experience. We know how to live in a what? 10 by 10. But can I give you some good news? 
Tell your friend it's it's it, 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 it it's not too it is not too long. Tell him. Uh, you're not speaking nicely. I think. Tell him it won't be long. It won't be long. Soon we shall sleep in in a six bedroom house. I think others are looking at me, Mulema, are you, are you making me dream? I'm not making you dream. You know why I'm, I'm saying this? If you believe the Bible, Jesus says, the Bible tells me this. God is, Jesus is coming again. Do you believe that? I know that one is easy to say yes. But do you know, when he comes, he's not coming like just the way he went. He's coming as the king. How many believe that? So if he's going to be king, why do you think Jesus will be living? Where will he live? Because some of you, when you see somebody has something, you curse him. So you, some people curse others. Oh, you have a house, you, you're in Bayako, <laughs> But you don't know that house, that man has built that house, ordered by heaven, to build that house for you. I know when I say this, you're not receiving, but I want you to receive nicely. It has been ordered for you. How? How do I know that? Jesus told them, the disciples, he says, no man who gives up everything for me will not receive a hundredfold in this world. And where? And in the world to come. Then he made a statement, he says, if I will reign, you will reign with me. Now, if Jesus is going to reign and Nairobi, he will be in charge of the city of Nairobi. Who do you think will be living in those homes? Some of you don't want to say me. It's okay. We'll leave you in pipeline. It's okay. <laughs> but me, I believe if I'm going to be there, and I believe I will, I know one of the homes that is being built somewhere, if I will rule with him, will be allocated to me. Yeah. Because the world will not end. I can assure you it is not ending. It will end at the end. Yeah. But because the Lord, can you believe in millennium? We shall reign on earth for a period of 1,000 years. And I cannot believe if the Lord is my king, why should I be living in a slum and a sinner is living in a good place and the Lord is my king? It will not work. So I'm encouraging you, don't worry, just be faithful. It's just a few years, 80 years in pipeline. After 80 years, you're going to live somewhere for, me, for a thousand years. And that is if you make it. If you are not like Lot, you know Lot didn't make it. Because Lot lost the promise. Oh, my time is up already. It's already up. Now listen to me. So in this scripture, the Bible says, and I read, it says here, he told him to look west, look right, and look wherever. And even where Lot had gone, God told Abraham, if you go down to verse 15, go to verse 15. He told Abraham in verse 15, all the land which thou dost what? Seest, to thee will I give it unto thy seed forever. This is just after Lot had left. When just Lot left to Sodom, then God tells Abraham, listen, now lift up your eyes. It means this man was a problem. Now that this fellow has left, I must remind you that you are now in the land which I will give to you. Let me speak again. Until that Lot in your life goes, you will never know the things God has in store for you. This is why the Bible says, things which the eye and things which the ear, even things that have not been conceived where? In the heart of man has God in store for those that love him. How many love Jesus here? Lift up your hand. Let me ensure, assure you, God has things in store for you that he wants to release to you. But they will not happen by miracle. Not by the laying on of hands. It is going to happen when Lord uh -uh, goes when Lot leaves, can you tell your friend Lot must go? We must release Lot. We must release Lot. And the terror must die. The natural must die. And these are the kind of things around us. The kind of things. The kind of, kind of things are the fleshly things. The worldly things. That we think are very important in our lives. We must release those things. So that God can open our eyes for greater things. Than the small, small, small things that we are seeing. The Bible tells me here that God told Abraham, 
He told Abraham, lift up now your eyes and see. Let me finish my sermon by saying this. Abraham was the promised man. He was the promised man. I'm done. He was the promised man, Abraham. He's the man who knew what God had said. He's the man who had the word of God in him. He's the man who had conceived it, embraced it, and he could discern what God was saying. Immediately God told Abraham, I will. And the word there is, I will. Look at it. Again, verse 15. He says, I will. He told Abraham, I will. He told him, I will. Abraham looked at God. He says, thank you. Jimmy, come again. Let me ask you. Jimmy, if now I'm showing you everything I'm giving you, I say now I've taken you, this is the plot that I have. And this plot, I will give to you. What will you demand? What will you demand? Title. Title. You will demand a title. Thank you, Jimmy. You will not just sit back and say, Lord, oh, you know now, no. Abraham now put it to God. He says, God, now listen. You said you will give to me. Can you give, show me the title? Show me the title. God would never have released the title when terror was there. Number two, when Lot was there. Because this man was with Abraham. Are you getting my point? God had to, 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 to is it, I don't want to say God had to kill Lot, I mean to kill terror. Terror, terror had to die. And Lot had to go. And then Abraham re realized, oh, this promise was mine. It was not for this gentleman here. It was mine. Then he told God, now give me the title. I want to know now that I am the way I am. I have no child. And you are telling me you will give me. Can you show me the title now? And I'll tell you this. If you go to verse chapter 15 and verse 15 and verse 18 and 19. This is my last verse. 15, 18 to 19. See what the Bible says. Oh, let's begin from verse. We, we can read verse 7 first. Verse 7 says, And he said unto him, I am the Lord that brought thee Chapter 15, verse 7. I am the Lord that brought thee. And this is where I want to certify to you. The journey didn't begin from Haran. He says, I am the Lord that brought thee out of where? It didn't say Haran. Because many of us think the journey began at Haran. No. Brought you out of Ur of the Chaldeans. To give thee this land to inherit it. Although Terah had hijacked the mission from Ur to Haran. But God had spoken in Ur. Now, if you jump to this verse, which I want, I want us to read here, that is verse 18 and 19. Now, look at what happens. In this verse, the Bible says, and in the same day, please read with me, the same day, the Lord made what? A covenant. A covenant with Abraham. And the covenant said this, I love that. The covenant said this, saying, unto your seed. Can you read with me? Come on. Unto thy seed. What the, does he say, I will? What is he saying now here? What does he say here? I give, I give, I, I given this land from the... Then he began defining where this land was. Before he had... Before this, he has not even told him how far this land is. Now let me tell you. You know the inheritance of God is so wide. Some of us just, we just eat on the surface. Yeah? But we don't even know how far God can take you if you believe in him. Believe me. Believe me. He began defining how far he's giving him. In this scripture, God now surrenders the title to him. He tells him now this land I give to you. I give to you. I'm giving it now to you. You are no more a stranger to me. Your inheritance, I am now giving it to you. Then he defined how far that land would go. And the scripture says, he says, from the river of Egypt. You know, people think the promised land is the present, the present Israel. Let me shock you by telling you, no. The promised land was much bigger than Israel. In fact, the promised land began as near as northern Kenya. Some of you are looking like this. Why? Where does the river of Egypt start? What is the river of Egypt here? Who knows where the river of Egypt is? From the river Nile, isn't it? Where is the source of the river Nile? 
Which means our brothers from Luoland, they live in the promised land. They're very excited about that, isn't it? But you know, we don't know. All we are thinking is in Israel. You know what that means? It means this. God can extend His mercy even to you here. Ah, uh, you didn't hear what I'm talking about. You, you people don't, don't preach with me many times. You, you just watch. That's why I lose my voice. Because I think you're not hearing. Then I shout. What am I saying here? The river of God was from Egypt. Down from where the river Nile starts. Which in my opinion is in Kenya. All the way up, all the way up to the Nile and all the way to the river Nile. I mean the Red Sea. And then the Bible says all the way to where? Can somebody help me here? To the great river. The river what? Those who've done geography. Where is Rio Fritz? Where is it? All the way up to Iraq was the land which God promised to give to Abraham. Now hear me right. And not only that, he says, and every place where you shall step shall be called what? Blessed. Then he says, and everybody who, who will bless you, I will also do what? Bless you. And then the Bible says, and all the nations of the world shall be blessed through you. Meaning even Mulema from Maragoli, I can also enjoy the promised land. It is not limited to anybody. It is up to you as a believer to reach out and receive the measure of the blessings that God has for you. Don't allow terror. Turn to someone tell him terror. Don't allow terror to take away your blessing. And if you have a terror in your life, somebody, something in you that hinders you from knowing Jesus, anything in you that keeps you away from the spiritual, something in you that has, you know, that has come over you to keep you away from knowing God, that is a terror. To limit your movement to the land of Canaan, take away that terror. Kill him. If you can. Or let him die. If he can. Are you listening to me? Terror is not a man. Terror is sin. Deal with your sin in your life. Don't allow sin to put you away from God. If you want to go to heaven, you must be born again. And there is no shortcut about that. We don't preach that one with apologies. We tell men you must be born again. And after you are born again, don't carry baggage. The things of the world, the flesh, the things of the flesh. Don't carry lots. No wonder it is called lot. Add an S. Lots in your life. Throw them away from your life. And I want to assure you, God will lift your eyes. And you'll begin to see as far as you can go. You will look at the east, you will look at the north, you look at the south, you look at the west, and you will see how far you can go as a believer. May the Lord Jesus bless you. And may you become the kind of man and woman that God wants you to become. Please worship him, come. Let us close this service. Hallelujah. Amen. May that be your word for this day. Amen. 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 Let's stand up on our feet. Let's close the service. Stand up on your feet. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, we give you praise. Thank you for your word, Jesus. Thank you for your people that you brought in this house this morning. Hallelujah. Lord, we give you praise. We believe you are, you are taking us to another level. We will never be the same again. Lord, for some of us who've never known you, you are drawing us to yourself by your love. Even as we speak this word, Lord, speak to our heart that is here this morning. Break somebody that, Lord, needs to be broken. Bring back somebody who needs to be brought back, Lord Jesus. Don't allow anyone to go back to his home the same way he came in. Lord, I'm asking you, just speak to us in a very special way. And cause us, Lord, to draw to you just like Abraham did. The Lord, we may not allow anyone to stand in our way to hinder your blessings upon our lives. Lift up your hands and talk to Jesus. Just lift them up. Talk to him. Tell him, Father. Just speak to him and tell him, Lord. If there be any terror in my life, any loss in my life, take them away. Take them away, Lord Jesus. Take them away. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Lord, if there be any terrors, any terrors, any terrors, Lord, people, things and uh, demons and spirits and every other obstacle that comes in the way of your people, this morning I command that terror to die in the name of Jesus. I command that sin to die. I command that obstacle to die. I command everything that is in that life. The Lord is keeping your people away from your presence. Lord, this morning, take it away from them, dear Father. Let your presence come and fill them this morning. Lord, your presence, may it come and fill them this morning. 
Because Lord, I believe your word goes forth. It never comes back to you void. I believe you are doing a new thing in the lives of these men and women. You are bringing us to the place where your promises will be yea and amen. Yes. Where we shall begin to feel you. We shall begin to have you. We shall begin to experience you, Lord. We shall begin to know you in the manner that you want us to know you. Yes, Lord Jesus. I'm asking you, Jesus, if there be things in our lives, the, the Lord saw my Father, things that we have embraced, people that we are moving around with, relationships that, Lord, we are entertaining in our lives. Lord God, situations that we've allowed to overrule us, things that, Lord, we have just brought into our lives to cause us Lord God, to stagnate in our work with you. I'm asking you, Lord Jesus, may you begin to do a work in the lives of your people. Break those lots and take them away from us. Break those relationships, my Father. Break those relationships this morning. Take away the sin that easily entangles against us, Lord. The sin of lust. The sin of lust, Lord. The lust of the eye. The lust of the flesh. The pride of life. The things which the enemy uses, my Father, to entangle your people, to keep them away from your presence. I'm asking you this morning, take them away, dear Father. Let your Holy Spirit brood over that heart. Break every fetter, break every chain. Break everything that the enemy has been trying to do. Take away the spirit of Lord. Take away the spirit of, of terror. Father, cause your men and your women this morning to experience a new thing in their lives, oh God. Lord, we refuse what the enemy has been trying to do. We refuse the seducing spirits that have been trying to call us back to sin, to take us away from your presence. Lord, this morning we surrender to your will. We surrender to your will, Lord Jesus. Because we believe, Lord, when we are connected with you, there is nothing impossible. Even the things that seem impossible in our lives, Lord, you are able to turn them into possibilities. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Even for Abraham, when it seemed impossible to have a son, when you made the covenant with him, Lord, you told Abraham, you will bear a son, and his name shall be called Isaac. This son shall be the inheritor of the promise that I've given to you. Father, may you open our wombs this morning. Open our businesses. Open our jobs. Father, open our, open our lives, oh my God. Open our children, Lord, our families this morning. Let the promise of God come true in the lives of your people. Because, Lord, we have chosen to follow you and to obey you and to walk in your statutes. Lord, we have chosen to take away all, all, every kind of obstacle in our lives that you may become Lord and Savior over everything that we are doing in our lives. We give you the praise and we give you the glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Jesus. Speak to us, Lord. Lord, as we take this moment before you,